Would this be the electrophile or the nucleophile? This would be. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be the electrophile. That's right. And why is that? Well, there's an alpha carbon, but there's no high alpha hydrogens. That's right. Just one more example of an alpha carbon with no alpha hydrogens. So again, it'll have to be electrophilic. So all of these are good examples of good molecules to use in a crossed aldol condensation because they can't be nucleophiles. So you know they're going to be electrophiles. Let's go ahead and give a name to this. Let's figure out the IUPAC name for that compound. Take your time and try to work out that IUPAC name on paper. We do. Okay. Now it's good that you wrote this out in more detail. And it looks like you also numbered the parent chain, which is good. And you're right. We always have to remind ourselves that the carbonyl carbon definitely is part of the parent chain. So it's 2,2,2-dimethylpropanol. Two, two, two alcohol. Good. So originally I think you were only naming one of the substituents, but then you caught yourself. There's two different methyl substituents, so we have to use two locators and the prefix dot. Good. So that's just a little nomenclature review. And uh, you were right, once again, this could not be the enolate because it doesn't have any alpha hydrogens. So none of these would be could be the nucleophile. So what would we use as a nucleophile? Well, we, usually we would use some type of ketone. Usually we use some type of ketone as the nucleophile. Now there's still a problem. We know that this, this can only, this, um, this will be the nucleophile and these won't because this has the alpha hydrogens. However, um, I, how do we know that this is not going to attack another version of itself? We also have to say that for some reason these are all more electrophilic than a ketone. So why are these all more electrophilic than a ketone? Because they have no, um, compared to like your standard ketone that has alkyl groups on both sides of the carbonyl carbon, it's not the same way with an aldehyde. Right. And so you, have, you don't have the um, electron density donating that you do of an alkyl group on an aldehyde. Yeah. And so it makes, it makes the carbonyl carbon of the aldehyde more uh, delta positive. When, it, uh, when it's an aldehyde or when yeah, it's a ketone. When it's an aldehyde. That's right. The whole reason this is an electrophile in the first place is the delta positive. But these electron donating carbon chains ameliorate that delta positive. Whereas an aldehyde has only one or no carbon chains, so it has a bigger delta positive. So not only do we know that this is the only thing that could possibly be the nucleophile, we know that we don't need to worry about another ketone acting like the electrophile because it's going to get beat by the, as an electrophile by these aldehydes. So we talked about last time, a good way to do a crossed aldol condensation is for your electrophile, you want to use, say, um, a aldehyde with no alpha hydrogens. Then you know that will be the electrophile. And then you probably want to use a ketone as the nucleophile that does have alpha hydrogens. Start by seeing if we can give a name to this compound.
I don't, I can't remember. Okay, we can go through that together. By the way, did you ever have a chance to watch the videos on naming aldehydes and ketones? Yeah, that's one you sent me. Okay, you, had it, you did get a chance to look at that? Okay, so this will help, uh, give us a chance to review that a little bit. Well, how many carbons do we have here? So we should number the parent chain. We can number it from either direction because it's symmetrical. So oct for eight. There's no double bonds, so it's octan, not octene. Now, what type of functional group do we have here? A ketone. What is, do you remember what's the suffix for ketones? Um, own. Own. That's right. Not too hard to suffix to remember. This is the same three letters that end the, the word ketone, own. How do we indicate, though, that there are two ketone groups? Um, we will call that diol. You might remember sometimes seeing diols, yeah. dialcohols. Well, we can use the same trick here, diol. And do we have to indicate that numerically? We do have to do that as well. Just as a technicality, maybe we've talked about that if the suffix starts with a vowel, you don't need an E here, but since the suffix starts with a consonant, we would put in an E. That's a minor technicality. Since the suffix starts with a consonant, we put in an E. And we do need numbers, so the numbers would be? One, two, seven. I think it's two, seven. Two, seven, two, seven octane diam. Two, seven. Although, actually, I noticed that uh, they wrote it two different ways. They have two, seven octane diam and also two, seven octa. So I guess both of these would be acceptable. This is another trick you can use if the suffix starts with a consonant. Instead of adding an E, you can just drop the N-E. Both of those make it easier to pronounce the word. So I guess either of these would be fun. I think maybe the main thing that we had to review here was that if you have two functional groups of the same type, you can still use the suffix, but you have to say right. die. Let's try to go through the mechanism here. Let's go through the mechanism for what would happen here. Maybe we can start by describing that in words. What do you think might happen first here? Um, there's going to be a, a deprotonation of an alpha carbon. OK, good. So let's see if we can show that. that are equivalent because the molecule is symmetrical. Okay. Now, these two are equivalent. Or, uh, uh, yeah. These two are equivalent, yeah. but these are not equivalent. So let's just start by deprotonating one of these internal alpha carbons, and we'll see how that goes. Let's start by deprotonating an internal alpha carbon. to show what's happening to those electrons in the hydrogen bond. Okay. We should have this arrow. Okay, that's fine. Well, let's decide what would happen next. Incidentally, what is it that allowed us to deprotonate this carbon? We can't usually deprotonate carbons. The, the resonance form that can be. There's another resonance structure where the negative charge is on this oxygen. We've chosen to draw the resonance structure where the negative charge is on the carbon, but we could have drawn the resonance structure where the uh, charge was on the oxygen. So a lot of instructors would actually show this step like this, so that then they could show this resonance structure. But I think that it's better to put the negative charge on the alpha carbon because that shows what the reactivity is doing. 